Today on Cider with Kevin, we're going to be making blueberry lemon cider in two different ways. Hello everybody, welcome back to Cider with Kevin. And in today's video, we're going to be doing something cool and new. We're gonna be starting a new series um, where I'm going to be trying to bridge the gaps between uh, beginner cider making and kind of intermediate cider making. So uh, this is going to be my small batch cider series. And the purpose of this is to make um, the same cider two ways. One that you can do with minimal equipment, uh, such as a beginning homebrew setup, and one that you can do with kegging. So that you can see the difference between the process and how you actually uh, can go from one step to another. I've noticed there's not really a lot of content on this on YouTube. So um, I'm intending on at least making something available so that uh, people can understand what different you need to do um, for cider making um, specifically. This is going to also serve as a test bed for kind of experimental recipes or recipes that I'm trying to perfect. To scale up to five gallons, we're going to start with uh, one gallon batches or one and a quarter gallon batches to be down to one gallon after primary. Uh, and then we're going to see if those are good. And if they work out, then that's going to be great. Uh, we can scale it up to five gallons. If not, then we'll know what to improve or what to do next time. So we're going to be starting with uh, two different or two different uh, varieties of the same cider, which is going to be a blueberry cider. The first one is going to be not kegged, and the second one is going to be kegged, as mentioned. Um, but the sweetness level we're going to target is going to be the same sweetness level. We're going to uh, be targeting a sweet cider for the end product for this, um, and that sweetness that sweetening will happen in secondary. So we'll be using a non-fermentable sugar, erythritol, on our bottle conditioned one. And we'll be using a fermentable sugar, sugar, on our non-conditioned uh, one, and our kegged one. So you can see, uh, we'll do a little bit of comparison of the flavor notes at the end of this and get an idea of how that actually tastes afterwards. But first, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, this is going to be a blueberry lemon cider. Uh, we're going to use, inside both of these batches, we're gonna use one pound of blueberries and we're going to use some dried lemons. In addition to that, we're going to be using Treetop Three Apple Blend. We're going to be using a one and a quarter gallon in both of these fermenters. That's to allow us to uh, um, deal with some losses in secondary to get up to a one gallon batch, as well as um, the blueberries will take up some volume two inside this fermenter, and that will maybe displace some of the volume at the end with some of uh, the yeast cake down there. So we're trying to aim for a one gallon secondary. Usually you expect 10% losses, but I'm expecting a little bit more than 10% here. So we're going to go ahead and also use yeast nutrient in this. Uh, we're gonna be adding about three grams of fermato into our both of our vessels so that it can have enough nutrition to last it throughout the entire fermentation. And uh, after we get everything mixed up together, we're going to let this sit uh, in the same conditions. Uh, we're expecting primary to last about uh, two weeks to end fermentation, and then we're going to let things settle down inside there and then do our first racking about a month later. Uh, after that, we'll do evaluations about when we're going to stabilize and uh, stabilizing our keg cider and when we're going to back Sweden and bottle carb our uh, non-keg cider. So let's go ahead and start mixing things together. To begin with, we're adding a pound of blueberries to our uh, both of our fermenters. We're adding fruit in primary because if we add our fruit in secondary, it introduces fermentable sugars. And if we're going to be introducing fermentable sugars, we want to make sure that we um, have those sugars fermented out if we're going to bottle condition or else it's going to potentially cause bottle bombs. So we're doing it in primary. Most of our fruit additions are going to be in primary unless we're doing something different for conditioning. Um, so just expect that inside this series, all of our fruit additions will be in primary. So let's go ahead and tear our scale. And add a pound of frozen blueberries. A pound of blueberries, here we go. All right, one pound of blueberries here. All right, let's go ahead and tear our scale again. And now we're going to weigh our lemons. I'm just gonna open, take off the lid to kind of reduce as much possible mass in here. Tear our scale. All right, it says we have 3.3 ounces of dried lemons, including the container itself. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and tear that. Tear. And then we're gonna dump the lemons on over here onto this lid and then weigh this. 
So this is 2.1 ounces. So we have about 1.2 ounces total of lemons. So moving over here with our first blueberry, we're going to add 0.6 ounces of dried lemons to our primary. Perfect. All right. And we're going to add 0.6 ounces of dried lemons to our other vessel, tearing the scale. And I should just be able to throw in the entire thing. And that's 1.3 ounces. Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to do an adjustment here. Maybe my math was wrong or something like that. And then that's one ounce. And then this should be up to one ounce. Tear this. This should be 0.3 ounces of dried lemons. 0.4. Yeah, cool. All right, we got everything all situated over there. So one ounce of dried lemons in each one of these. Next step, we're going to be adding a gallon and a half of our Treetop 3 Apple Blend. Just going to head and add a gallon into here. So we're adding a gallon of a quarter to each one of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a half a gallon to each one of these vessels first. And then we're going to go ahead and shake them up to oxygenate. the cap because I need the cap for both of them. Same thing on this one. It's important to add oxygen in the early stages of fermentation because your yeast life cycle uh, when they're um, starting to bud and reproduce they need oxygen for that process so make sure you oxygenate in some variety. Happy yeast is happy yeast is healthy yeast and healthy yeast make good brews. If you also pour turbulently that ensures you get oxygenation into your brew too. Which is something you can do. These carboys are kind of um, oh no, these, uh, <laughs> these fermenters are, uh, um, a little bit on the, uh, uh, hard to, to, to mix side. I don't want to get a lot of, um, I don't want to get a lot of turbulence inside them once they get up past a certain point because they just start to spill out. And finally, yeah. We're gonna add up to the rim line over here. I don't know, I think that's supposed to be 1.1 gallons on the rim line. So we're just gonna do that. And then we'll call that good. You may be asking yourself, what about the rest of the juice in here? Eh. Not worried about it. We're probably just drink it. Okay. Looks about even, and that appears to be a half a gallon out of that. So maybe that was like a little bit more than uh, a little bit more than uh, 0.1 gallon each. So we got these all nicely measured out. Let's go ahead and add our fermato. Good. Switch this over two grams. It's one gram, two grams, and then three grams. Two first one, mm, close enough. That was 3.1, it's close enough. All right, fermato added. And then finally, before we put our, our air locks onto both of these and let these go for um, a bit of time, we're gonna take an initial gravity reading. Since we put the same ingredients in both of these, it should be representative of both. So I'm not going to be taking a reading of both of these this phase. I'm just gonna suck off the foam over here. So as expected, supermarket juice is one anywhere between 1.050 for apples and uh, 1.052. So it's uh, at 1.052 this time. I should say 1.054 is the norm. 1.050 to 1.054. So this one is at 1.052. So right in the middle. 
Uh, the yeast we're going to be using today is going to be Red Star Premier Coke de Blanc. Get my scissors. And dump them in our sanitizer. Not 100% necessary. It's sterile on the inside, but good practice regardless. Cut off the top of the pack. And then we're just going to put half in each. About half. Okay. That's it. We're going to go ahead and fill up our airlocks and set these uh, aside. Um, we're going to ferment these at about 68 to 64 to 68 degrees uh, around this time of year in our house and uh, let this go for about uh, two weeks. Check it and see if it's done. And then at about at a month, so 328, we're going to be putting these into our uh, secondary. So we'll see you back then. Not shown on screen here is me transferring the cider from primary to secondary. And after that, uh, we waited two additional weeks and we are now at the point where we can start doing our back flavoring and back sweetening. Hello everybody, welcome back. We're going to go through our process now of, um, well, back sweetening, back flavoring, and also bottling one of our two ciders. So uh, on our right, we have our cider that has been selected for uh, bottling. This is just going to be a, um, using non-fermentable sugar and non-fermentable non flavoring. We're going to go through now and uh, basically make our adjustments. And after back sweetening is done, we're going to go ahead and bottle these. That's going to be a relatively easy process. Um, for our kegged cider over here, the one we're gonna be using real sugar to back sweeten with, uh, we're also able to use um, some lemon and uh, blueberry juice concentrate in order to uh, back sweeten this cider here on the left. So this is our advanced version. This is our, inter our, our beginner's version, basically. So on the right side, we're going to be using erythritol to sweet. On my right, I guess you are left. Uh, we're going to be using erythritol to sweeten. Uh, erythritol is a non-fermentable sugar that is made from fermenting uh, sucrose. So uh, it is a sugar alcohol. For our flavoring additions, if we need to add more flavor to it, since we cannot add fermentable flavor like blueberry juice because it will just ferment out when we're doing our bottle conditioning, we have um, some McCormick Pure Lemon Extract. I heard that this is actually really good uh, for lemon flavor. And then we have um, some Olive Nation Blueberry Extract. Uh, the reason why I'm not using Olive Nation on both of these is because I, the Olive Nation uh, blueberry or lemon extract apparently is not very good, but the McCormick one is. Um, so we're just gonna be going through and taking a, an initial tasting um, and then doing some balancing adjustments uh, on this one to get it to our sugar or sweetness and flavoring that we'd like for our blueberry. And uh, on this one, we're going to be going through right now and just stabilizing it, uh, putting it on some lemon peels to get that extra lemon flavor if needed. And uh, then after it's stabilized, we can go ahead and keg and uh, back sweeten this one over here. So uh, that's going to be the process. The reason why we can't add sugar to this one, uh, the one that's going to be using non-fermentable sugars, is because part of bottle conditioning, you add a small amount of priming sugar, usually about an ounce per gallon of sucrose. And that gives you about two atmospheres of pressure. Any more extra sugar, so any more fermentable sugar, and that can come from uh, lemon juice has a small amount of fermentable sugar. Blueberry uh, juice slash or apple juice or the concentrates also have uh, a good amount of fermentable sugar in there. And the yeast will consume that and it can lead to potential bottle bombs. That's not something we want to do. So anytime that you're doing bottle conditioning, which is what this process is on the right over here at the kind of the beginning, pro the beginner's process, um, that is going to be needing to use non-fermentable sugar if you want to add additional sweetness because all the sweetness you add from fermentable sugar is going to turn into CO2 and alcohol. So uh, that's why our flavorings are also non-fermentable too. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and uh, stabilize this one on the right, take a sample of it before stabilization actually, and uh, let's get a little bit of assessment and see what type of flavorings we would need to add on that. So let's open up this one on the left. Now I'm going, I'm being very specific here uh, because I'm going to be moving these around, transferring these around, I'm gonna to have to add yeast to uh, the one on the right side here in order to ensure that we are getting a, a post uh, bottling fermentation. So it's gonna be adding yeast to this, just a small amount of priming yeast. Um, the one on the left, I'm not going to be adding yeast to. So I'm going to be doing everything with the one on the left first, uh, just to ensure that we're having clean gear. Uh, both these recipes are the same. 
So I don't anticipate that, but I'm still gonna flush my uh, equipment with a sanitizer at and clean it every single between uses on these two. All right, gonna take a sample. Let's see what kind of flavor we're getting and see if there's anything we need. I am getting a lot of blueberry on the nose. It actually, the lemon is honestly coming through a little bit. On the, on the, the taste, it is dry blueberry. It's kind of loose on the mouth, which means that it's kind of watery. Um, this could definitely use some additional tannin content to it. And I think the blueberry concentrate is actually going to hit that a little bit. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave the acid alone. I think that might be fine. The tannin, the tannin balance could use a little bit of balance, but um, I think it'll be good with some sugar. Let's go ahead and um, try our one over here on the left or on your left, my right. And I think it's probably going to be the same because they were the exact same recipe fermented side by side to each other, but there might be some batch to batch variation. So let's just go ahead and give this a go. And I'm just gonna once again state this for the camera, uh, that this is being sanitized in between every use. Mm. This one has a much stronger lemon bouquet. The blueberry has kind of taken a back note to the lemon bouquet and it is Actually, quite pleasant amount of lemon in this. There is definitely a difference between these two. Um, this one, substantially more lemon. I don't think this needs any more lemon in order to have a more balanced. I actually need blueberry. Um, so we're going to go ahead and hit that with just a little bit of blueberry extract and see how that goes. Uh, lemon notes, they're coming through strong on this one. Uh, quite like it, honestly. It's kind of funny how you use the same recipe and you have the different variation like this. This is on. This is on unreal how much more lemony this is than the other one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the lemon extract alone on this side, and I'm just gonna go with the blueberry extract. I think that this is going to be the way on this. Um, cue baby Yoda meme. Uh, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, first we're gonna stabilize this one over here with 50 parts per million potassium metabisulfate, 75 parts per million potassium sorbate. We're gonna sand it, we're gonna just dump it into this jar, and then we're gonna rack on top of that. Um, in addition to that, I'm going to peel some lemon peels and put them in here. Uh, they're gonna be small slices of lemon peel and I'm gonna put them, get a little quick dunk of sanitizer beforehand. So let's go ahead and start that process before we stabilize this one on the right. All right, starting out with peeling the lemon. Um, the basic rule here is no pith. So none of the yellow bits. We're just gonna peel a single lemon. Okay, one peeled lemon and two ounces of sanitizer. You really don't want to sit in the sanitizer too long. Now we're going to go ahead and add our parts, our 50 parts per million metabisulfate and 75 parts per million uh, sorbate. Right. 0.19 gram of potassium metabisulfate. And that's it. It is an eighth of a quarter of a teaspoon. And then for potassium sorbate, I'm gonna be doing 0.28 grams. I'm gonna go ahead and dump that into our fermenter. Okay, done. Now we're gonna go ahead and rack on top of this. Okay, now here comes the fun part. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of priming yeast. This is Red Star Premier Blanc. Um, I don't use it for ferment, but for priming yeast, it's pretty good. And we're going to be using some blueberry extract in order to, uh, to basically sweeten, uh, well, flavor. We're going to be using one ounce or 28 grams of uh, cane sugar per gallon, as well as some erythritol in order to uh, basically, uh, the erythritol is to sweeten, cane sugar is to prime. Add CO2, basically. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put it into our uh, one gallon, uh, put this cider into our one gallon pitcher over here. Well, now it's time for the bench trial portion of this uh, video, where we're going to basically dial in the sweetness. I have roughly a half a pound of erythritol here, and I'm hoping I don't need more than that. If I do, then I'm just gonna kind of tolerate where it is, because <laughs> I don't have any more. Before we do that, let's see what our final gravity is, though. 0.998, final gravity. I'm gonna add in about that much erythritol. I know we're going to need a lot. Berry stuff should be sweet. Basically, I'm stirring until I hear all the crunchy stop. Erythritol usually dissolves pretty quickly in these things, so. Also, while I'm stirring here, I'm making a sure to not add in extra oxygen here. I'm just doing a stir to combine. I'm not trying to add in any oxygen. No, no rough jostling over here. Let's go ahead and take a sample of that. This will give us our starting point for flavor too. It's very lemony. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to add in a little bit of blueberry extract, going with three quarters of a teaspoon of extract to begin with. 
right away I can tell you that was a lot of blueberry smell. Also, the fun part about this is you get a little sample every time you do this. Ah, yummy. And I'm gonna add a little bit more sweetness into this because I know it's going to need more sweetness. Once again, stirring till all the crunchies stop. Blueberry and lemon are kind of nicely playing together on the nose here. I think it needs a little bit more sweetness. Blueberry flavor is good now. Blueberry flavor is good. Sweetness can use a little bit more. Yeah. Mmm, nice, nice combination on the nose. It's kind of funny how you uh, add in sugar, or sweetener in this case, and it makes it smell more sweet. I don't understand how that happens. Okay, that's, that's pleasant. That's pretty pleasant right there. Let's get a final gravity of this baby. All right, final gravity is clocking in at 1.016. And that is to my liking for taste. So, next step. The reason why the sugar, the priming sugar, gets added at this point is because, um, well, it's quite simple actually. I don't want it to affect the amount of sweetness I perceive on the palate. So, 28 grams of priming sugar. 28. Give this a stir. But before we do that, flatter yeasty beasties. Remember, this is Red Star Premier Blanc. A little bit of sprinkle on top. I'm gonna give it a mix. And now with our sanitized bottles over here, it's time to bottle. All right, capping time. Got our 10 bottles. Was perfectly 10. So plus one point for the raised marking side bottles I use on City Studying Brew. Don't know if you have a chance to check them out. If you've watched mine, you probably will like their videos. They're very similar in style. So, bottling all these. Uh, one thing you want to be sure of when you're bottling, um, if you're using oxygen-free caps like I'm using, you want to make sure you sanitize both ends of them. So just dunk them in some sanitizer beforehand. And then while you're bottling, make sure you have a good crimp on everything. So press down past the point you think you need to crimp. So there should be like a point where you'll feel it let up. In this, there like that, more. All right, here we have it. We have 10 bottles of uh, back sweetened blueberry lemon cider, which is going to sit around for a couple weeks before we can taste it. And this guy over here is going to sit for till tomorrow, and then I'm going to be able to take him out uh, of his fermenter and just basically give him a tasting. So, anyway, I'll check back tomorrow and this will be really quick for you. It's been 24 hours since we stabilized our cider over here and racked it onto some lemon peels. And now it's time to go ahead and rack it off lemon peels um, and do some back sweetening and black back flavoring if we need to uh, adjust any of the flavors. So, let's gonna go ahead, we're gonna go ahead and get started by um, just racking this cider off of are uh, these lemon peels. Okay, it's time to do a taste of this. It smells like blueberry and lemon. It tastes like blueberry and lemon. Could use a little bit more blueberry though. I'm gonna go ahead and back sweeten this. Okay, so now we're going to add a little bit of blueberry concentrate to kind of boost up that blueberry flavor. This is Dynamic Health Pure Blueberry ju Juice Concentrate, no added sugar. So look for no added sugar on your blueberry concentrates. And we're just going to add to taste. We're going to take gravity readings after we're done. Big pull there. Okay, that's the blueberry flavors here now. I think it needs more sugar though. When we're adding sugar, we're really adding it to flavor here. So I'm going to tell you the gravity after this is done, and you'll know how much uh, basically sugar I have added to this. Um, the blueberry is also to taste. So you'll know, um, basically start with adding blueberry concentrate until you get to the amount of blueberry flavor you want. And then you start adding in sugar to get to the amount of sweetness you want. The blueberry concentrate, while it does have sugar in it, is mostly going to add that really concentrated blueberry flavor. And the reason why I'm saying to taste is because my palate's going to be different than yours. And uh, I'm gonna give you the gravity reading so you know what I ended up at, but it very well might be a different value than what you would like. So add it to taste. All right, 1.020 as our final gravity. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a keg and it's going to be carbonated to 
uh, two and a half atmospheres, I think is going to be nice with this one. Nice, good sparkle to it. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and rack this into our uh, keg, put it on CO2 for a couple of weeks, and then we're going to do a side-by-side -side tasting. All right, let's go ahead and try these two ciders. On my right, your left, we have the uh, sugar-free version. And on my left, your right, we have the uh, full sugar version. Uh, let's go ahead and start by doing a, uh, compare the appearance of these two ciders. Um, both of them are, well, this one at least, a uh, nice deep, rich red. And with this other one, also a nice deep rich red, but this one is a less red. So the sugar, the sugar one is a little bit less concentrated with the red coloring. Very, very slightly though. Um, good amount of carbonation. We have a, uh, our head retention on here. So if I get this nice good swirl, uh, it produces a lot of uh, bubbles coming out of the solution. So the carbonation did get nice and clingy and stick pretty well inside the sugar-free version. And uh, same inside the sugared version. Um, both of them have what I would describe as a fleeting head. It lasts enough to create like this nice little like uh, um, kind of a bubble cascade on the top, but it doesn't really stay long enough to provide that nice foamy, rich creaminess that you get out of a nice heady beer. So um, that's pretty typical for ciders. Um, having something with a lot of body and viscosity really boops it boops, <laughs> really boosts that chance of that happening to get that nice creamy head. Um, and that's usually something like proteins or um, fats. Let's go ahead with aroma, starting with the sugar-free one. This is blueberry. This is really, really blueberry. My goodness. Um, I'm reminiscing of the previous blueberry lemon one that I made that had uh, the, the blueberry kind of transform into a red wine type of flavor. This is not doing that at all. This is blueberry, which is great because it's what we went for. I am able to pick out the lemon this time though. It's very subtle. It's kind of kind of faint, but it is present. Let's go ahead with the uh, uh, sugar version. Ooh, aromatics wise, this one, okay. This one is very blueberry forward. Um, I smell blueberry like it is just pungent coming off the uh, coming off the glass. This one is more restrained. It has a, a softer blueberry essence to it. Um, it it smells more complex. I can smell the deeper elements of it, the apple element underneath it, as well as the lemon element. It is popping through. It is a more transformative smell, I should say. It goes it goes from the blueberry to the apple to the lemon in that order. It kind of just like passes through your, your uh, olfactory cascade over here. All right, let's go ahead and give this a taste. Let's start with the sugared one. Okay. It's not as sweet as I was expecting it to be. Um, it, it kind of, it's weird, I should say. Uh, what I'm getting up front is a blueberry flavor, but then that blueberry flavor kind of it takes on a little bit more of a, it's short lived. Um, it's a lot of blueberry up front, it's very pungent, very powerful, but then it kind of just dies. Um, the lemon is there in the background. I can taste the lemon. Um, it's just not as present as you would, as this aroma would imply. This is very blueberry forward, but then just immediately dies. Um, yeah, it's not complex. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and put that straight out there. The flavor, the profile on this is not complex. It's very, very front of the palate heavy. Um, I should say it's very uh, initial initial uh, palate heavy. Like it hits you in the back of the tongue and you kind of get a little bit of puckering sensation on the side of your mouth from the, the uh, presumably from the tartness of the blueberries and the, uh, um, and the lemon, but it it doesn't do anything. It just it just it washes away very very quickly. Um, that's a bit surprising to me. Obviously, it has alcohol in it. But when I'm going to say this, it might sound weird. 
it has a alcohol like flavor that um, is not ethanol. Yeah, uh, it's it has it, it it just has that presence to it. I, it's I wonder if I think that these use glycerin to to do that. I know you can extract with alcohol too, but it does it doesn't. It has a weird flavor. All right, let's go over the sugar version. Okay. All right. All right. You get blueberry. You get lemon. The apple is kind of lingering in the background. It's not as present as I would like it to be, but you get blueberry and you get lemon and they are in harmony. Yeah, that's really good. Um, it's very complex. You get this nice rich tannin too going with it too. I think it might, I think I use, I can't remember honestly right now, but I'm pretty sure I use blueberry concentrate to back sweeten this. And that blueberry concentrate is kind of tannic heavy. Um, yeah, it's, it's good. Um, it definitely accomplishes the blueberry and lemon very well. Um, there's no apple though. Like it, I'm trying, like I can pick at it in the back. You get a little bit of that malic acid kind of presence to it that comes from the apple, but the apple is incredibly muted. Um, I think that this variety accomplishes the blueberry and lemon, the, the ratios pretty well, um, but it just overwhelms the rest of the cider. It, it is a blueberry and lemon flavored. Um, if you had a blueberry and lemon flavor and you added grain alcohol and neutral spirit to it, you would probably get something kind of similar to this, um, which isn't to say that's not good, but it's not really giving the apples a good representation. The apples were here simply to provide a, a amount of acid to the beverage and also to add alcohol to it. Um, this is more akin to a country fruit wine that is made of blueberries. Is it bad? No, it's really good, honestly, um, but it's not not a great representation of the apples, which is something that we, that I personally strive to do. Um, uh, yeah, um, I'm not going to do my 50 point rating system for these uh, because I think I'm just going to compare the two of them just directly. Um, I would say that uh, overall, I would give the one without sugar, I'd give this one a seven out of 10. It's good. It's a nice recipe. It's easy to follow. Uh, and also it's something that can be done at home with minimal equipment because you don't need to worry about having a keg or getting CO2 or doing any of the other uh, business you need to do in order to stabilize. Uh, meanwhile, I would give this one over here uh, an 8 out of 10. I really like the way that these flavors are married together. It has a much more complex flavor profile. The aroma is very decadent and rich. It has that nice marriage between blueberry and lemon. And it just is, a, it's really, it's quite pleasant. I think this was a pretty good primer on transferring a recipe between something that doesn't require kegging to something that does require kegging and giving you an idea of the differences between those two recipes. You are going to get a different flavor profile out of them and that's fine. Um, you are also going to run into limitations about when you can add fermentable sugars in order, in order to uh, add that extra flavor. Could I have achieved this flavor by adding the blueberry concentrate and primary? Same ratios uh, to our other sugar-free and then letting it ferment out and then back sweetening it? Possibly. That's something to experiment on in the future. But if you run if you run through fermentation completely and then you get to the point where you need to back sweeten, uh, this is the method you do it. You add non-fermentable sugars to your, uh, to your sugar-free variety. Um, my preference is erythritol. Um, and then you bottle carbonate using a measured amount of sugar. If you are going to keg, you have a lot more options, but you need to stabilize your brew first, which, for, which means that you have to add potassium metabisulfate and potassium sorbate or go through stabilization by batch pasteurizing. Um, that also is a, a, a presumably a, a fine method. I do not, I'm not a fan of batch pasteurizing because it requires a lot of equipment. Um, you, if you're going to do that, you either need to have some variety of UV uh, filtration system, or you're going to have to run into something like you're gonna heat it up, uh, which heating up a keg full of 
liquid is going to take a lot of heat to do and you need something particularly large to do it in. So um, not my recommended method uh, for batch pasteurization unless you're using something small like one gallon volumes, which is feasible. Um, but you have to do that under pressure. So that's also the kicker. Um, so what do I what do I think about these two compared to each other? I think that if you were going to be making these recipes, uh, I would prefer the one with sugar. So this is good. This goes back to um, if you can get to kegging, get to kegging. Uh, you're not going to regret being able to keg things with your making cider with making beer, possibly um, because you can basically accomplish everything with beer making without a keg, uh, with the exception of like cask poles or something that is incredibly niche. Um, meanwhile, uh, making cider, back sweetening, is a big process, a big part of the cider making process. Uh, and it's back sweetening with carbonation, which is the challenging part. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it was a bit rambly and a bit long. Um, I'm going to be making more videos like this because I think it's an incredibly interesting topic to have a comparison between the different methods of, uh, of back sweetening. I don't think that there is one definitive method that's better than the other one for all circumstances. It really depends on your personal situation, your gear level, and your expertise. So, uh, anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, have a good day. Cheers. Happy cidering.